a literary agent's life gets spiritually entangled, with the mystical body tree causing dire consequences for every word he speaks. A prominent literary agent, Jack McCall, waters a withering tree while disregarding his wrecked house. His thoughts ring in his head regarding his inability to speak, as it can cost him his life. Days ago, a sharp-looking Jack called his assistant to demand to buy things he didn't need. His wife, Caroline, handed him their toddler son, Tyler, and he immediately panicked. So, the mother took over changing the toddler's dirty nappy on a bar counter in their luxurious home. Afterward, Jack Jack went to his favorite coffee shop, but there was already a long line. An older woman shut him down when he tried to cut the line. Jack queued, but seconds later, he boisterously opened his phone, pretending to have a wife about to give birth. The people immediately allowed him to come forth and congratulated him for being a new father. Afterward, Jack blabbered nonstop in front of his psychologist, Shrink. The doctor tried to cut him off, but Jack continued talking until the session ended, leaving Shrink frustrated. The agent went to his company, and a valet named Wayne warmly greeted him while desperately asking if he already read his manuscript. Jack made nonsensical excuses before commanding the man to take care of his car. He arrived in his office, and Aaron, his assistant, frantically greeted him. Jack demanded another cup of coffee, and his assistant confidently presented him with a bowl of specially prepared cereal according to his boss's preferences. Aaron expressed his desire to be a proper literary agent someday, but Jack wasn't listening and advised his assistant to imitate him. Aaron updated him about the manuscript, but the boss explained that he only needed to read the first and last five pages. Soon, Jack led a presentation about Dr. Sinja, a social media famous spiritual leader. The participants and his boss, Samantha, doubted how he'd sign him, but Jack proudly declared that it was a done deal. Afterward, the agent infiltrated Sinja's meditation group despite sticking out as a sore thumb due to his mouth's nonstop blabbering, which distracted the members. Sinja told them to embrace the silence, process their pain, and grow. Jack noticed that the leader immediately approached the sobbing woman, so he faked an exaggerated cry and was escorted to a private room. There, the leader expressed his fascination with Jack's fast track to enlightenment. The agent blabbered about it despite being clueless. Sinja probed about his ulterior motive, and Jack stated his mission. The leader instantly rejected the offer, but the agent began his long speech to convince the man to sign a contract with them. The spiritual leader asked him if he had read his book, and Jack affirmed it even if he hadn't seen it. The agent leaned on a tree in the middle of the garden, and his hand got wounded, leaving a trace of his blood on its trunk. To further convince the spiritual leader, Jack promised to give his everything to help spread Sinja's philosophy. The man finally agreed but proclaimed that a person's words could impact the universe. Jack called Aaron to boast about the contract and went to his mom's nursing home. He warmly greeted his mother, Annie, but the woman called him Raymond instead. He corrected his mom, pointing out he was not his father since his old man left. Emily, Annie's caregiver, prudently explained the older woman's deteriorating mental condition. The mother and son sat together and Jack happily continued to speak with Annie, but she thought he was still Raymond. Annie tells him about their son, who resents him for leaving them, which makes Jack more upset. He lovingly bid goodbye to his mom, reiterating he was not his father, but the woman remained, believing he was Raymond. That evening, Caroline excitedly showed Jack a picture of a family house. The husband insisted that their current place was great. Caroline argued that it's a bachelor pad and isn't child-friendly. The wife persuaded him further, and Jack agreed. However, he clarified that they'd only renovate some space for Tyler, which utterly disappointed Caroline. At that moment, the body tree magically sprung out of the yard, causing tremors. So the mother checked on Tyler while Jack headed out. Gaudencio, the gardener, commended its beauty but clarified that he wasn't involved in planting it. Jack recognized the tree from Sinja's garden and thought it was sent as a gift. Gaudencio left and the agent commented about the tree, unaware that leaves fell after he spoke. The following day, Jack went to his office with a splitting headache and received the surprise of his life as Aaron informed him that Sinja's book was only five pages long. The agent hardly confronted the spiritual leader, but Sinja pointed out that Jack told him he had read his book. Jack sneezed while ranting about it, so he explained that it might be an allergy from the tree that Sinja gifted him. This intrigued the spiritual leader, so the agent brought him home to show him the tree. Sinja noticed the oddity of the body since one branch was already out of leaves. He inspected the tree further and asked the agent to speak. As Jack did, the number of leaves that fell equaled the number of words he said. Sinja laughed at the fascinating events, and the agent soon realized the circumstances. To test this hypothesis, he sang a worthless song, and many leaves fell. Sinja concluded that the agent and the tree had been
become one, so if the tree lost all its leaves, it would be the end of Jack's life. Bewildered, he asked how many leaves were left, and Sinja told him there might be around a thousand. Jack rashly chopped the tree to cut its ties to him, but he flew away and found an axe scar on his waist, similar to the body. Sinja told him he had heard a similar story but thought it was folklore. Therefore, he declared he'd go to Bolivia for a three-day spiritual retreat and ask his colleagues about it. He reminded the agent to stay silent until he returned, but Jack's phone rang and he wasted another word. Soon, the agent confided in Samantha, but he was taken as a joke and suddenly threw up leaves. Jack awoke from his nightmare and looked at the body in his yard. As he prepared to leave for work, he scribbled a note for Caroline, but he discovered that even written words were counted as leaves kept falling from the tree. He went to his favorite coffee shop but failed to order correctly. The shop attendant misunderstood him, so he told Jack about his admiration for the Beatles and punched the wrong orders. Jack left the store with his hands full of coffee and pastries. Suddenly, a visually impaired man told him to inform him when it was time to cross the road. Jack could only groan, and the stranger took it as a prompt and crossed the street without fear. The agent panicked and saved the stranger from the vehicles, causing his cups of coffee to fall and some cars to collide. He successfully assisted the man, but lost everything he was holding. He proceeded to therapy, and Shrink turned frustrated as Jack only made faces throughout the session. The agent went to the office afterward, and Dwayne bugged him again. The agent remained silent and made faces toward the valet's inquiries, so the man thought Jack was playing with his emotions and wallowed in self-pity. Jack signals to stop and hands him the car key before stomping away. Aaron greeted his boss upon seeing him, but since the talkative man was unusually silent, the assistant felt guilty about everything he did wrong and confessed his embarrassing secrets. Mary, another employee, arrived to tell Jack that Samantha needed him, so he angrily put on his coat and dragged Aaron. Samantha introduced her best agent to their guest from the European market. The boss urged Jack to explain Sinja, and he summarized it by saying that life is a journey. Unfortunately, their foreign counterpart failed to understand it, so he repeatedly asked Jack to repeat his statement, which defeated the agent's purpose of lessening his words. Meanwhile, Squirrels climbed up the body, and Jack couldn't help but jiggle away from the group while Aaron mimicked him. That evening, Jack and his assistant met with partner publishers for Sinja's book. Since Jack couldn't speak, he instructed Aaron to handle the matter. Unfortunately, the assistant acted arrogantly while using vulgar language toward their business partners, and the men ended their business transactions. The following day, Jack attended a parent-son class with Tyler. He could only mouth the nursery rhymes, but the facilitator singled him out and demanded him to sing, so he gave in. The parents, including Caroline, felt touched due to his efforts, unaware of the father's agony. That evening, the wife told him she appreciated his attempt to bond with his son and proposed attending the class twice weekly. Jack rejected it and gestured his explanation about the tree, which upset Caroline more as she thought he was making more excuses. The husband chose the fewest words to clarify his point, but Caroline keeps interjecting about Jack's absence and their family lives. She blew her fuse as her husband kept groaning and gesturing without proper words of explanation, so the misunderstanding escalated. Jack called Sinja and wasted more words, but the leader immediately hung up after telling him that they'd talk in two days. After he returned, Jack cursed at the tree and the leaves continued falling. The following day, he went to the coffee shop and successfully gestured his order. Upon arriving at the company, Samantha confronted him about the meeting incident and warned him to close the deal with another publisher over the phone. The business partner on the other line began offering cheap deals, shocking Jack, so he frantically grabbed the speaking toy figure to communicate. Unfortunately, its battery was drained, so he ordered Aaron to gather as many as possible. The assistant collected similar toys in the office, and Jack smartly used them to respond accordingly, which led to a successful deal. Meanwhile, Caroline confided with her friend about their family situation, so she's given something to spice things up with her husband. That evening, Jack arrived at a hotel, but the receptionist failed to understand him, so she gave him the wrong room key, surprising Jack as he saw a stranger in a pirate costume. He grimly returned to the receptionist and was finally given the correct key. He was immediately thrilled upon seeing his sultry wife. However, she demanded to tell her what he wanted, but the husband only groaned and made faces. Jack explained in broken English to minimize his word count, but this escalated Caroline's terrible mood, so she kicked him out in his undergarments, making the man a spectacle. Aaron suddenly called to inform him that Samantha was with the publishers and Sinja's book was taken from his desk. Jack rushed to the meeting place, displeasing his boss as he wore casual clothes. Simultaneously, Gaudentia sprayed pesticides on body, causing Jack to cough uncontrollably. Moments later, the tree absorbed the chemicals and the agent acted highly drunk. Jack's foolishness was uncontrollable and Mary arrived to deliver the five-page book, which left the business partners aghast. They immediately cut ties with the company and Samantha fired Jack. Afterward, the agent summoned Aaron to his house to explain his situation through a drawing and demonstration. Though the assistant struggled to understand him, he finally got it in the end. Jack instructed him to watch the tree as he set out to do 
good deeds to cut the connection. The agent went to donate randomly. As he checked the leave status from Aaron over the phone, Jack found out that nothing changed, so he took back the signature watch he donated and proceeded to rescue a cat which was all in vain. Jack went home and discovered that Caroline and Tyler were gone. He opened a photo album and took a picture of his younger self and his parents. He went to the tree and meditated while holding the photo. He returned to a time when his younger self was with his mom, but as Jack tried to speak with the child, his younger self called him dad and declared he was never present. Hearing dad, his meditation abruptly ended. Late that night, he met Sinja in a restaurant, but the leader showed no urgency. He frustratedly gestured that he had lost his family and job. Sinja expressed sympathy and presented him with a snow globe as a souvenir. Jack yelled that his life was almost over, so the leader informed him that he didn't find any answer aside from finding peace within himself by looking at the truth. Sinja added that Jack shouldn't use empty words and express his honest feelings toward the people he loves. Hours later, Jack returned home wasted, and Aaron arrived to propose solutions regarding Sinja's bug. However, the agent had given up on everything and marched to the tree, cursing and insulting it. Aaron yelled at him to stop, but Jack played music, sang along, and vented his frustrations about losing his family and job. The assistant tried to cover his mouth to prevent him from talking, but the stubborn Jack resisted, so Aaron pounced on him, and Jack's head hit the floor. The younger man turned off the ringing phone and taped his boss's mouth as he fainted before heading out. The following morning, in the present time, Jack awakens and removes the tape on his mouth. He kneels and sobs in front of the body before taping his mouth again and watering the tree. With a few leaves left, Jack speaks with the body through his mind to ask what to do. The phone rings, and Emily informs him that Annie is waiting for Raymond to attend her birthday. Jack resumes watering the tree, and a blue butterfly gracefully lands on the copy of Cinch's book on the ground, so he takes his time to read it. Soon, Jack knocks on Caroline's door, and upon seeing her husband, the wife starts ranting. He signals her to stop and uses four words to describe how he loves his family. Caroline turns speechless, and Jack leaves after kissing both of them. He proceeds to the coffee shop and gives the shop attendant a rare The Beatles record. Jack expresses his gratitude to him, losing another three leaves. He goes to the company to return Wayne's manuscript before commending and buying it, which the valet truly appreciates. Jack's car arrives, but it's covered in bird droppings, so Wayne volunteers to clean it. The agent declines and drives away to enjoy his remaining moments. He buys some sweets and observes the people around him as he slows down for the first time in a long time. Memories of his family flash through his mind, and he goes to his mom, who thinks he's Raymond. Instead of correcting her, he goes along with it. Annie enthusiastically talks about her reliable son, and confides how Jack remains resentful toward his father, especially after leaving them. She adds that Jack will be happier if he lets everything go, so she convinces Raymond to tell his son how much he loves him, since it's not worth living without a family. She stares at him and finally recognizes Jack. He lovingly bids her farewell, and only three leaves remain on the body. Afterward, men shovel the ground in a graveyard where the McCall tombstone is located. At the same time, Jack runs toward the body in a vast field, and the young Jack resting under it calls him Dad. In the real world, the agent stands before a tombstone as he meditates. Simultaneously, in the vast field, the adult Jack introduces himself to his younger self, but the kid insists he's Raymond. The child tells him how painful it is to lose his father. Jack apologizes to his younger self as Raymond and asks how to make up for it. The kid tells him that he has to play chase with him, and so Jack does. As the kid goes further, Jack returns to the real world. He utters words of forgiveness toward Raymond, and the last three leaves on the body fall. A thunderstorm follows, and Jack collapses due to a stabbing pain in his chest. Suddenly, his phone rings, and he slowly takes the call. At Jack's home, Aaron stands before a blooming body tree and informs Jack on the other line that the tree is alive. Sometime later, Sinja praises Jack for a wonderfully written book about his enlightenment, and the renewed man enthusiastically hugs the spiritual leader. They're interrupted by Aaron, who's dressed up like Sinja. He confidently presented publishing houses to close a deal regarding Jack's book. The renewed man lets Aaron decide, as he's now the literary agent. Jack and Sinja head out, and the new agent yells arrogantly for his assistant, Stephen. The assistant reluctantly tells Aaron a delivery has arrived, and a smaller version of the body tree enters his office. On the other hand, Jack brings a blindfolded Caroline and a happy Tyler to a particular place. As the husband removes the blindfold, the wife excitedly sees the house she always wanted. Jack tells her they own the place and reassures her that things have changed as he loves the silence around them. Caroline stares admiringly at him and notices the body tree at the corner of the garden. The couple kiss and Tyler says his first word, which excites his parents as they begin a new life as a family. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.